Thank you. Go ahead and be seated. Wow, it's good to have time of worship with you. Amen. What a great time it was. Give the Lord a hand. Yeah. With everything that he's done, man, giving him a little hand clap is, man, that's minimal, but boy, that's good stuff. Amen. I want to thank you all for being here. Thank you for joining us on our live stream service. I want to just share with you that I love being part of the church. Amen. And there's something special about being a part of the body of Christ. And I'm excited about it. I love being here. I love uh, worshiping. I love studying. I love being a pastor. I love preaching to you. I love fellowshipping with you. Man, there's every aspect of what church is about, I love. And a lot of people say, well, now you're, you're, you're supposed to say that because you're the preacher. Well, actually, I'm a pastor because I believe it. Amen. And so that's why I do it, and, and, and I love having fellowship with you, and, and I really believe the church has a great message, amen? I believe the church has an, a, a life-saving message. I believe that the church is the hope through Jesus Christ that this society needs. So what I want to share with you today is the beginning of a series of messages that I'm going to preach over the next few weeks, and it's titled, Making Church the Place to Be. Because this is the place to be, amen? If you, want, if you want fellowship, if you want love, if you want strength, if you want encouragement, the church is the place to be. Because here is where the love of Christ is manifested through us. But my thing is, if we have such an important message, why is it that the churches aren't full? Why is it that you didn't have to give reservations like you would at a restaurant to be able to be here this morning. Because it should be a place where people would want to be. But unfortunately, it's not for society. And, and let me dare say, it's unfortunately not even the place to be for a lot of people who call themselves Christians. It's not important. But my friends, listen to me. This is the place to be. This is where God works. And many say that the church just isn't relevant to their needs. And so if you watched our, uh, our Wednesday night uh, face, uh, First Baptist West Live program that, that we do, that you know in the message that I shared is, is kind of a premise to this as to what do we do and, and what do we do to make the church relevant. And I pointed out that there's a couple of things that some churches have done. One of them is that they say, well, whatever society wants, we'll give them. We'll, we'll become like society. Man, we'll, we'll do everything that just is a draw to them and attracting them to come and just, we don't, we don't expect anything, just be, be at church. But then there's also those who say, you know what? We're not changing anything. It's worked for the past 50 years. It's good enough for us then. It's good enough for us now. I would dare say that both of those are wrong. Amen. Because the church has a message, the church should be relevant. So what I wanted to do is I want to take the next couple of weeks and look at how do we get the church to be the place to be? Because we have an important message here. We have some great things going on here, my friends, that are not going on in the world, or they should be going on in here that's not going on in the world. And this is, again, the place to be. So how do we do it? Well, first of all, we must not get distracted from our purpose. There are a lot of things right now in our society that are vying for our time. There's a lot of things in society that are vying for our attention, to focus on, to work at. And when the church loses what it is that we're supposed to be doing, then we will become irrelevant. But I promise you, without a shadow of a doubt, that if the church is not being distracted. If we are doing what it is we are called to do, we will always be relevant to society because, listen, society will always need the church because society will always need the message that the church has to give. Amen? So today what I want to do is look again, starting off making the church the place to be, and what I want to do is look at how do we do it. And the title of my message today is About the Father's Business. To make the church relevant, to make the church the place to be, it, then we are to be about the Father's business. I want you to take your Bibles and turn to the book of Luke, chapter 2. We're going to be looking, starting at verse 48, actually, verse 48, 
And we're going to be looking here, and what this text is about is, you remember that Jesus was a young boy here during this time, and he had gone with his family to Jerusalem, and they were going to celebrate the Passover. Well, when they left, they were in such a group, a large group, that, of course, uh, uh, the, the parents thought that Jesus would with uh, with the, the aunts and uncles. The aunts and uncles thought he was with the cousins. The cousins thought he was with the parents. No one knew where Jesus was. They took off and Jesus stayed in Jerusalem. Well, they finally got the idea that Jesus isn't around. So they went back to find him. And when they went back, they found him in the temple. And what he was doing in the temple, the Bible says, was an amazing uh, thing because he was even amazing the scholars. He was teaching the word of God. And so we pick up here where Mary goes and, and finds him. And just like all mamas, she wasn't happy with the son because he wasn't listening. He didn't come with them. So let's go ahead and stand in honor of reading God's word. As we look, starting at verse 48, 49 and 50, again, of Luke chapter 2. And so when they saw him, they were amazed. And his mother said to him, son, why have you done this to us? Mamas, you know what she meant by that. Why have you done this to us? Scared us to death. Look, your father and I have sought you anxiously. And he said to them, why did you seek me? Did you not know that I must be about my father's business? But they did not understand the statement which he spoke to them. Father, we thank you for today. Thank you for the blessings you've given us. And God, as we gather here this morning, I thank you for the sweet spirit that's here. I thank you for the great praise and worship. And now, Lord, as we step into your word, I pray that you would be able to, to manifest it, to speak to our hearts, to change our lives, and Lord, to be an encouragement to us. I pray that, as I always do, that the words I'm about to say, they'll not be my words, but Lord, these will be your words. I pray that this is not my message, but your message. And God, I pray that the response would be from your people as you desire for it to be, for those here and for those watching. And it's in Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Thank you. Please be seated. Now we see again about distractions all around us. And so when they came and found Jesus, they said, why did you do this? Us? We've been looking, you've been, we've been looking like crazy for you. We were scared to death. We didn't know where you were. And Jesus said, well, why were you looking for me? Don't you know that I need to be in my father's business? Other translations say, don't you, so didn't you know that I'd be in my father's house? So what he was doing here, the Bible says that they didn't quite understand his statement, but what Jesus was doing here was he was confirming his ministry. He was confirming what his purpose was here for. He basically said, you remember when the angel Gabriel came and told you about me that I was going to be born, that he, that I had a purpose. Well, today I am here and I'm fulfilling the Father's purpose. So if God was doing that, he is now calling us to be relevant to society by being here and fulfilling the purpose that he has given us. My question to you is if God would be asking anything of you today, what would your response be to him? Would it be, I want to be about your business? Or would it be, God, I've got so much going on, I can't be about your business right now. Maybe when I get through this COVID-19 business, then I'll be able to do your purpose. God, maybe whenever I get a little older, I will be able to be about your business. God, I'm just getting my, my life started and, 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 and my career started. So, you know, later on, I'll be about your business. My friend, it is that attitude and that mindset that makes the church irrelevant because the church isn't doing this business. We need to be willing to say, God, here I am today. Whatever your purpose is for me, I want to do it. So we as a church need to be saying, God, we want to fulfill your purpose. So what is that purpose? Well, all we have to do is we just look a little further and we see that Jesus said what his purpose was. So the church's purpose is to seek and to save. That's it. That's what our purpose is. Our purpose is to get the message of Jesus Christ out to the world, to show them Christ in our lives, to show the love of Jesus in our hearts and the way we deal with each other, the way we deal with the world, that we are seeking and saving now, Jesus said in, in the book of, in the book of, uh, of Matthew 18, 1 says, For the Son of Man has come to save that which was lost. So Jesus said, I'm about my father's business. My business is to seek and to save. So then he comes to us, you remember, and he says to the church, Now I give you 
the ministry. It's yours now. You take it from here and you go seek and to save. So what does that mean? Well, the first thing it means to go out. It means to go out. He says, I am seeking. Do you know what that's what seeking is? Seeking is not coming in here, opening up the doors and saying, hey, world, the church is open for business. Come on in. Well, there's no seeking in that. Seeking means you have to go out. You have to leave from here and do what God wants us to do. Can I share something with you? Most lost people aren't in this building. As a matter of fact, I shared in the first service, my hope and my prayer (laughs) really is that this church is full of saved people. Amen? I hope it is. If not, if you're here today and you don't know Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, I want to encourage you to receive him in your heart today. I'm telling you, you don't need me. You don't need the church. You need Jesus. And all you have to do is say, God, I feel today that I'm not, I'm not saved. And God, I feel like my heart is empty and I need you to forgive me of my sin. And God, I need you to save me. It's that simple. And man, I want to know that every person in this room, and I'd love to know that every person that's watching this today on, on live stream, I, I pray that you're all saved. But if not, you need to receive Jesus this morning. You need Jesus more than you need anything in your life. So this is a place I hope that a lot of lost people aren't here today. I hope everybody's saved. But if you're not, then you need to receive Jesus. But if, if let, me, let me share this thought with you. Most lost people aren't coming to this building. They're not just walking into this place. We can't have that mentality of, again, opening up the doors and hoping they'll walk in. Most uh, most people in here are saved, and most people that usually walk through the doors are saved. So if if that's the case, and we're to seek and to save the lost, guess what that means we need to be doing? We need to be leaving this place after this morning service. Don't get up and leave now, unless God tells you to go, hey, get somebody. But we are to go and to seek and to save Those people which were lost, we must go where they are. That's what seeking is. Go where they are. Do you know what? If the most lost people aren't in here, that means they're out there. That means they're doing everyday life. You know what that means about us then? If we're going to be relevant to the church or relevant to the society, we need to go out there. Go. And then he says also to bring in. Now, we a lot of times associate bringing in with bringing them into the church building. Now, that's a good thing. But what this bring in means is bring them into the the relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ. We are to go out and to live Christ, share Christ, give them Christ, so in the hopes that they will want what we have. Bring them in. Bring them into that loving relationship with Jesus Christ. Now, that means to draw them in. Amen? Amen. Draw them in. But now I want to understand, it, it's, it's good to invite people to church. Amen? So I'm not saying don't go out and bring them to church, invite them to church. Go invite them. As a matter of fact, I, I, if we're going to be about the Father's business, that's one of the aspects. Now I asked it in the first service, so I'm going to ask it in the second service just to be fair to the first service people. And for all of you at home, if you are attending the church, when was the last time you actually invited a person to church. I mean, literally invited them to church. Now, I'm not talking about the mass Facebook, hey, folks, the church is open. We're having church tomorrow. We'd love to see you all there. Hey, do you know what? That's back to, hey, the doors are open. Come on in. Right? That's what that means. The doors are open. Come in. We're just sending out a mass Hope that you'll come. No, I mean that you, God laid somebody on your heart. He put somebody right in front of you and you either called them personally or you looked them in the eye and you said, hey, we got some good stuff. We'd love to see you in church on Sunday morning. Now, listen, I'm not doing this to berate you. I'm getting you to understand. Jesus said to be relevant to society, we must be about the father's business. And if we're seeking and the saving, that's what his business is. Then, folks, we got to go out and we got to begin to seek and to save. And we got to we've got to bring in, draw them. The Bible tells us that we're to draw them in. And then when we look at the Bible verse in Luke, chapter 14, verse 23, it says the master said to the servant. Go out into the highway and the hedges and compel them to come in 
that my house may be filled. Do you know what he's saying? Go out there and do whatever you have to do to invite them to get them into a relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ. Even if you have to beg. Compel means beg. Call out. Do whatever is necessary to bring people to Jesus. Again, that's our that's our business. That's why we're in existence. That's why the very moment you or anybody at home, the minute that you got saved, Jesus didn't say, oh, good job, I got you. Come on to heaven. He says, you're saved, but I'm going to leave you there because I'm going to use you now to get others. Be about my business. And again, when the church is about God's business, the church will be, listen to me, will be relevant to society. Because they need our message. They need the message. So, we're to seek and to save. But the second thing we're supposed to do is make disciples. Now, do you understand the Bible didn't say here, church, go out and make Christians. Because you know what I found out? I can't make a Christian. Amen? I can't. I can't. I and you and you at home cannot save anybody. The church is not about being the Savior. A lot of people are depending upon their eternal soul because they are somehow connected to a church. Maybe grandma went to that church, so that's my home church because grandma went to it. And so because of that, we're all going to heaven. No, the church can't save you. So it doesn't say go out and make Christians. It says go out and make disciples. Jesus Christ is the only one who can save people. We get the message of Jesus to them. They receive that message. They call upon his name and they become saved. And from that point, then the church is to go and make disciples. The Bible tells us in the book of Matthew chapter 28, 19 and 20, says, Go therefore and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son and of the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all things that I have commanded you, and lo, I am with you always, even to the end of the age. So what this text is telling us, it's different from here than when it says, go out and, and compel them. This one's a little different. What this one means, this go means as you are going or while you are going. That if we're about the Father's business, we're not commanded to go now. He says that while you're doing it, here's what I want you to do. So as you leave here today, and I'm going to assume that many of you or all of you are going to leave here today, right? Because we're not having lunch here. Will Smacks are not back yet. Oh, I know. I feel the same way. But you're not going to stay here today. You're going to go home. You had folks up there, you're not going to sit and stare at our webpage the rest of the day. You're going to go do something. So what the Bible is saying is, since you're not going to stay in this building all day, While you are going, which you are all going to do, my staff feels like they don't ever get to go home, but they even get to go home some. So while we're going home, while we're going to the grocery store, while we're going to work, while we're doing these things, then that's how we are to make disciples, while we're going. And then it tells us to teach them. Teach them what? It tells us to teach them to observe all things. Now, what does that mean? It says teach them to be obedient. Teach them obedience to the word. Let them see obedience in us. Let them see obedience in what we're doing. And listen to observing what the Bible has told us. Now, the thing that I want you to understand, it's not when I feel like it or when it's convenient. I am to make a disciple at all times because I am to teach people. You are to teach the lost world to be obedient to Jesus, doing those things that he tells us to do and know that he's with us when we do it. So we're to, to demonstrate it. We're to demonstrate the love of Christ in us and we're to teach people to, hey, just follow what God says. 
Now, we're not supposed to do it like many of us as parents. We've, we, I know all of us as parents have one time or another said, I will never say that word when we tell our kids to do something and they ask why. Because we're going to explain to our kids why they're doing something. But can I, if you're a parent, you've had kids for very long, especially if you've had teenagers for very long, you have fallen into that trap where you, you said those words you said you'll never say. When I tell you to do something, why? Why, 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 why? And you've explained, explained, explained. They still want to know why. What's your final desperate response? I told you so because I said to do it. Amen? But we are to go out and to demonstrate, not to stand there and go, you do what God says because he said. But we are to demonstrate that in our lives. Teach them to be obedient by, by what? Being obedient. Well, that's a crazy concept, huh? Be obedient. We will become relevant to society when the church begins to be obedient to what God has called us to do. Because the society will want to do what we're doing because of the effect that we have. But too many, too many churches today are making cheerleaders and spectators. The church should not be full of cheerleaders and spectators. The church ought to be full of disciple makers, teachers of obedience to the word of God by demonstrating it in our lives every single day to a society that is living in disobedience to God. Amen? So he says, teach them to observe all things that I've commanded you to do. Teach them. And the last thing, there will be benefits to us. If we do it as a church, if First Baptist West will be disciple makers, if we will go out and we will proclaim the name of Jesus and we bring them and we teach them to be obedient to God, obedient to his word, we grow them up into mature Christians, the benefit will be there because here's what's going to happen. The church will be stronger. Amen. The church will be strong. Why will the church be strong? Because its members are strong. Why are the members strong? Because we've, we're being taught to be obedient to the word of God. And why will that make us strong? Because it is the word of God living and breathing through us that gives us that anchor, that gives us that foundation, that gives us that ability to not panic when things go crazy, that we'll not be divisive when things don't go the way I want them to go, that we'll be strong in Christ, we'll be strong in love, we'll be strong in unity. When we are mature in Christ, when we are all being obedient to the things that he has called us to do, we will become relevant to the world because we will be strong. But not only will we be strong, but folks, we'll be energized. Whoo! Man, we'll be energized for Christ. Man, we, you won't have to have special events to tell me to be a disciple maker. Man, I'm going to go every single day because the Christ, because Christ is working in me and he's strengthening me. He's encouraging me. And so now I will be energized. Man, wouldn't it be great to have a church that's full of energy for Christ? Amen. Not having to be prodded, not have to be pulled, not have to be begged, but almost have to be said, whoa, slow down just a little bit. Man, I've always said when I was coaching all those years, I would much rather have an athlete that I'd have to say, hey, whoa, whoa, slow down a little bit, rather than one that I'd have to always say, man, much, much. Come on, run faster, work harder, do more. Oh, but the church will be energized when Christ is our energy. When he is working through us, it is his power being manifested in us, not my power, not your power. Our power runs dry, Amen. Have you ever run dry? My wife prays for me to do that every now and then. Slow down. Oh, but man, when it's Christ's power working in us, we will be energized for Christ. Not energized for stuff, but energized for Christ. So we'll be stronger. We'll be energized. Then we're going to be fruitful. When we are relevant to society, when we are relevant to society by doing what God wants us to be, making the church where it's supposed to be, and being about our Father's business, my friends, we will be fruitful. We're going to multiply. 
We're going to multiply. We're going to have added to the church daily that which would be saved because we are disciples. We are on fire for Jesus. We are excited. We have the fruits of the Spirit which is working in us because as I shared last week, we'll be like that tree planted by the water where its roots are going down. The roots are reaching into that water. We're getting the nutrients that we need even, oh, even when it's dry and hot, we'll still not wither. And even when drought comes, man, that we'll not, we'll not have to be angry anxious about anything, but we will continue to produce fruit. My friends, that's what we prom- were promised last week, and that's what we're told here today, is that we will be fruitful because we will multiply. Because listen to me, when you have a tree that is planted by the water, and man, it's got leaves and it's got fruit on it, and it's out in this dry parched area, that tree will look like an oasis in the desert. Amen. Can I tell you something, my friends? We're in a drought right now. We're in a spiritual drought in America. We're in a spiritual drought around the world. And I'm here to tell you that we'll become relevant to the world. We'll become relevant to society when we are planted by that stream and we have that nutrient going in us and we are being fruitful. First Baptist West and other churches that are following Jesus Christ are empowered and energized by him. Listen to me. We're going to look like an oasis in the desert. We're going to look pretty good. Amen. We're going to look pretty good. Because we got something that a lot of society is missing right now. And they're going to look at us and go, man, something is good there. Something is good there. When we're fruitful, fruit of the Spirit working through us as individuals. Loving one another strengthening one another, encouraging one another, not fussing and fighting and backstabbing and destroying and doing what everybody else in the world is already doing. That's fruitful, the fruits of the Spirit working in us. Love, joy, mercy, tenderheartedness. All those. Wow. I'm telling you what, I'd sign up for that place, amen? Praise the Lord, I think I have right here in this building. Amen? To make the church the place to be, we've got to be about the Father's business today. I'm going to ask the praise team to come back up here as we get ready to enter into this next phase of our service. And this is the time for you here in this service or for you at home. If some, something in your mind is saying, man, you need Jesus. And I trust the Holy Spirit enough that as I preached his word, I believe the call was going out here. I believe the call is going out there at home. And I believe some may be sitting right here. Some may be there saying, you need Jesus. You hear that in your voice, in, in your mind. You hear that in your heart. Man, I need Jesus today. I want to encourage you, please call upon his name. The only hope you will ever have is through Jesus Christ. Not through your past, not through your future, not through the church, not through your membership, not through your baptism, not through anything except Jesus Christ. So today, would you come to Jesus? Would you come? And maybe you're here and you say, or you're at home and you're saying, man, it's been a a long time since I felt that fruit. It's been a long time then I want you to say today, God, restore back to me the joy of your salvation. And a quick way to answer that would be is just to answer again the question I asked you a while ago. When was the last time you felt energized to bring someone, to invite them into a worship service, into a Bible study, into a class? Then let us go. Let us us compel people. Let us be... Let us be energized today for Jesus Christ. You don't need me to do that. You can do it right there where you are at home or right here. You don't need me, but you need to call on Jesus. And we're going to sing that song here in just a moment. We're going to praise him. Man, and during this praise time, I want you to settle some things in your heart with God. Do it right here, right now. If God's speaking to you about anything, would you come? I'll be right down front. I'll be praying for you. If you're at home and you need to talk to someone, all you have to do is call our church number, 536-4227, and someone will be listening to you. Someone will pray with you right now. This is our time. Father, hear our prayers this morning as we step into this time. Lord, as we, we praise you one more time, thanking you for who you are and what you've done. Father, we, we just ask that you... 
change lives right now. And Lord, as we commit ourselves to you, let us be about your business. In Jesus' name, amen. I want to ask you to stand.